Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. And welcome to episode 98 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. I'm Lola Phoenix. Please send your questions to nonmonogamyhelp at gmail.com and they'll either be read in the podcast or the column anonymously. If you want to read the columns, listen to the podcast and subscribe to the email newsletter, you can do that all at nonmonogamyhelp.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at nonmonogamyhelp. I say follow us, but it's it's me. I'm I'm the one running those accounts. If you want to support the columns in the podcast, podcasts even please consider becoming a patron even one dollar helps me run the columns in the podcast and it's just like a nice vote of support i really appreciate it you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash lola phoenix all right let's get to this week's discussion question if this is the first time you're hearing the podcast welcome Every week, I have a discussion question that you can use with your friends, partners, metamores, anyone to get to know them a little bit more, and I also answer it myself briefly to give you a little bit of context. This weekend's, or this week's discussion question is, do you have a policy on dating metamores with partners? If you're new to polyamory, a metamor is basically your partner's partner. So basically, do you have a policy about can your partner date the people you're dating? Basically. I don't really have a policy about it. It's never been something that I've had a huge issue about, mostly because when I've had like a a partnership that's lasted for a while and then I've been interested in other people, those other relationships haven't lasted for a longer time. Like it's just been like dating and then, you know, it didn't, it didn't necessarily last, but there were a few times when my partner and I were interested in the same person. And I did have a partner at one point who felt like if I was interested in somebody, then they would kind of back off a little bit, mostly just because I don't get interested in people very often. So it seemed like it was worth it for them to kind of like take a step back. I never like demanded that from them, but you know, it was, it was nice at times, but at the end of the day, you know, if you like someone who's to say whether or not they will like you or the person that you're with. So, you know, it's all kind of up in the air. I don't really have a policy about it. I think I would just kind of take it as and when things happen. But I definitely don't really want a triad situation. I'm a little bit, I've always been kind of like, "Mm, I don't want that because I had a friend who, one of the first polyamorous relationships that I saw was actually a triad with um, a friend of mine in that and I saw my friend get dumped by two people on the same day so I have always kind of been like "Mm, I don't know if I want to be in that situation not saying that that's necessarily going to happen but that kind of put me off of it and so I I think I would have to have a discussion about like "Ah, I'm not really interested in a triad uh, just FYI so yeah we'd have to see how that would go But yeah, just to say the question again, do you have a policy on dating metamors with partners? Let's get to this week's letter. I'm mainly asking for help in regards to dealing with my partner's partner and my feelings towards him. To sum it up, originally my partner's partner, let's call him Jay, took an interest in me and reached out to me. Now I'd already known about him and had a mild crush on him, but I didn't have any interest in pursuing that because I didn't know how my partner, let's call him B, would feel about it. Jay instead reached out to me and we talked for a little bit, but he was consistently sending mixed signals and wouldn't make an effort to get to know me or reach out to me to form any bond, to be honest. I feel like in retrospect, he liked the idea of being in a triad style of relationship, but didn't want to do anything to actually make it happen. This went on for a few weeks, which caused my anxiety to spike, and eventually after meeting with my therapist, I decided to have a conversation with him. He told me he was no longer interested in me, despite sending mixed signals and not actually making an effort, and I respected it, though he also urged the desire to be friends. I'm currently moving, so a lot of my attention has been focused on that, and I've tried to make time to spend with me and him on at least a friendly basis, but I've had to cancel a lot, which according to B was mildly bothering Jay. I recently sent an apology stating why I've been so scattered but have yet to get any sort of response. So my question is, is it okay to feel like my Jay has extreme communications issues with anyone but B? And if that's the case, should I call him out on it? I don't want this to trickle into B and Jay's relationship, but at the same time, it's making me uncomfortable and has been since Jay decided to reach out to me and proceeded to give no effort at all in getting to know me, even though it was his idea. (laughs) 
Before we get to this week's answer, I'm going to quickly plug this episode's sponsor, BetterHelp. Quite often in my columns and podcasts, I encourage people to seek a polyamory-friendly therapist. And for some people, finding that locally is not something that they can do. So BetterHelp allows you to find therapists online that you can send messages to at any time of the day, and they do offer some financial aid. You can get 10% off your first month by using the promo code NONMONOGAMYHELP at checkout, or you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash NONMONOGAMYHELP. Let's get to this week's answer. I think the biggest thing from this is to learn to take mixed signals as one signal. Mixed signals is one signal. It is a signal of unavailability. And the longer that you allow yourself in any situation, regardless of who it's with, to be pushed and pulled by mixed signals, the more unhappy you're going to be. So try to learn to develop a policy of immediately disengaging with someone. And I know this is very hard immediately disengaging with someone regardless of whether they want to be friends or regardless of whether they want to be romantic partners when they give you quote unquote mixed signals. Okay. Mixed signals is a signal and that is a signal of someone who is unavailable and hopefully over time you will learn to immediately become turned off by that and immediately go like, nah, I don't want anything to do with that. That is okay. Second thing, declining a friendship doesn't have to be personal. Do you actually want to be friends with Jay? I totally understand feeling like you want to befriend your metamors or your partner's partners. However, I have experienced in my life forcing myself to be friends with people makes me miserable. I do not like doing it. And I don't like feeling like I'm forced to be friends with someone. I don't like feeling forced to be around someone that I don't get along with. Now, you may be different. It may not be such a big deal to you. Maybe you do want to be friends with Jay. However, it kind of seems like even if you do want to be friends with Jay, Jay is not communicating in a way that you want a friend to communicate. Jay is not being clear. So even if you wanted to ideally be in a friendship with Jay, Jay would have to be behaving differently. So really, you don't want a friendship with Jay because what they're offering you is this mixed signal, aka no signal, that you would rather not have to deal with that makes you anxious. This is not really between you and B. And B should not be relaying messages from J to you. And I would ask that to stop immediately because it's not only not a fair position for B to be put in because B is not the referee of your relationship, but also because it's a a little bit of a violation of your privacy. You have a right, whatever is going on between you and J, whether you're friends or you are romantic partners, for that to be between you. Now, obviously, we do talk to our friends about the people that we're dating. We talk to our friends about, you know, uh, friendships, stuff like that. And that does become difficult sometimes when people date their metamors and all that. So I do believe a policy of privacy is really, really helpful when it comes to this type of stuff. And it would be the same if you and B were just friends. If you were all had a friendship group and... Jay was trying to organize something with you and you weren't getting back and then you had another mutual friend try to play referee. That would also not be fair to that mutual friend. So don't put people in the middle of things. I'm not saying you put B in the middle of it. It sounds like Jay maybe asked B to say something to you, but that needs to not happen. I would ask for that to stop right away. If you don't want to be friends with Jay, given the current circumstances, then don't be. I don't think it's your responsibility to fix Jay by calling Jay out for not having the quote-unquote communication skills, because who knows what's going on in Jay's life, right? Jay may be sending mixed signals for all sorts of reasons. It's not your responsibility to play detective and figure that out, and you don't have to. So you can just say, listen... I understand that you want to be friends with me, but I need someone to be a little bit more communicative. And I'm also a little bit busy with moving right now. So I would actually not really want to meet up as often. And I would prefer if maybe you allowed me to offer the times that we meet up or is it okay if we just stop organizing things together because I just feel a little bit of anxiety around this and would prefer not to. I feel like it's okay to decline the friendship and move on. I don't think that you should try to fix 
J or demand that B hold J to account or anything like that. What goes on between B and J about their relationship is really not your business to solve and it shouldn't be trickling down. It's trickling down because B has made a little bit of themselves or J has made B into the referee and, and it, that doesn't need to happen. So I think that you can, with kindness and, and not necessarily be like, I don't want to be your friend because you're bad at communicating, but you can say like, I am not in a place where I can be friends with you right now and I would like a little bit of space. And maybe after you're done moving, maybe after a few months, you know, if you want to reach out again to Jay, then you can. But understand that you are getting a signal, which is a mixed signal, which is a signal that Jay is not a consistent communicator, regardless of what Jay's interest in you is, unless you are willing to put up with that and unless you're okay with that, it's going to continue in terms of Jay's behavior. And you don't have to solve it and you don't have to get B to fix it. You just need to accept it for what it is. And you can make a decision later on if you want to be friends with Jay. But just make sure that you are not forcing yourself to fix anything. Because you don't need to fix anything. So yeah, to, to encapsulate it and to repeat everything, I think that over time you hopefully will be able to, to kind of take in the idea that a mixed signal is a signal, which is a signal of disinterest or unavailability, which hopefully, regardless of whether you are romantically or friendship interest, interest in someone, you will hopefully learn that this is a sign that you should step away and disengage. And that is going to be difficult just to like reiterate this because sometimes my own therapist has explained to me that Sometimes our brain finds mixed signals in a way more interesting or highlights it because it's a problem to solve. Like the same sort of whatever test it was where, you know, if they provide food, if an animal pushes a button, then the animal like only goes up to the food when it you know, only goes up to push a button when it needs food. But if the food doesn't come consistently, then the animal becomes kind of obsessed with pushing the button and figuring out at what point does the food come out. And you kind of have a similar thing with people who send mixed signals. Your brain kind of starts to go, okay, well, what's the, what's the solution? How can we solve it? And it's difficult. It's a hard trap to kind of pull yourself away from, but it is more beneficial for you in the long term to learn to take a mixed signal as disinterest and disengage from that. You don't have to be personal about declining a friendship with Jay. You can just say you're super busy and just don't have the time for new friendships and we'll get in touch with them later on and step away. That really shouldn't cause an issue between B and J because their relationship is not your business and you need to ask B to stop playing referee and stop relaying messages because that is not helpful in any case to anybody in this situation. If B begins to put pressure on you to become friends with J, I don't necessarily think that's great and that might involve you really rethinking things because you should be allowed to say to B, look, I don't want to be friends with J right now and I want space. As long as you're not being rude, and as long as you're being cordial, then I don't see why you're not allowed to have that. So you should be allowed to ask for that. And you should ask for that because trying to be friends with Jay is making you unhappy. And you shouldn't be forcing yourself to be friends with someone just because they're dating your partner. Simply decline the friendship. Move on. Maybe leave it open for you to come back to later on when you're more settled. But right now, you're allowed to put down that boundary of saying like, I'm not in a space where I can be friends. I would like some space here. That's absolutely fine. Please don't put it on your shoulders to fix J. Don't expect B to hold J accountable. Don't involve B in any way between this you and J at all. Like, don't involve, like, separate this because any attempt to be referee or, or have someone else hold someone else to account is not really going to work and is just going to cause stress in the relationship between you and B. So please step away from that. And then I think in the future, you and B should really think about what your opinions are and talk with each other about how you feel about dating each other's partners. Because if you both agree that it's off limits, that's fine. You're allowed to both agree to that. But I think that you not knowing how B will feel about it from the start 
that might have made the situation a little weirder. So if you're not sure how your partner feels about something, then just ask them. Just ask them right away. And don't put it on your shoulders to keep, and I totally understand because I've, I've done exactly the same thing, like assume that it's my responsibility to prevent my partner from breaking up with somebody else or, you know, that I need to make sure I don't mess that relationship up. But actually the relationship that goes on between B and J is is not something that you can control and it's not something that's even your business technically so don't put that responsibility on your shoulders if you're interested in a metamor or a person that your partner is dating in the future then have a talk with b about it it's fine to ch- it's it's okay to check in about how they feel about it as long as you're not making them the referee between the two of you because that puts a lot of pressure on them and it's really, again, the relationship you have with Jay isn't really B's business, just like the relationship that B has with Jay isn't really your business. Not really. All right. So yeah, that is what I would suggest in this situation. And be nice, be kind to yourself, accept that like it, it makes total sense that you would feel anxious. It seems like you're doing the best that you can do. I'm really glad that you have a therapist here that can help you sense check things. And yeah, I hope this helps and good luck. Thank you for listening to episode 98 of the Non-Monogamy Help Podcast. If you want to be awesome, you can donate to my Patreon. Donating $5 or more means your name with your permission will be read at the end of the podcast. This week's current patrons are Laura Boylan, Chris Alperi jones Juke, Alan Robertson, Nikki Jones, James Wartell, Leo Yaki, and Tyler Tigno. If for whatever reason you can't become a patron because I totally understand... Then you can take five minutes to log into iTunes. If you want to, find the podcast, rate, and review it. That would be really helpful for me. It helps me get the podcast up there on the ratings, helps people find it. It's really good. And if you don't want to write a review and you just want to do a rating, that's also appreciated. So if you have five minutes to spare, that would be awesome. That's all for this week. You will get a new column next Friday and another podcast episode in a fortnight. Thank you again for listening. You've been listening to Non-Monogamy Help. Our podcast music has been provided by Chris Albury Jones at albury-jones.com. And the art was made by Dom Jung at d-o-m-d-u-o-n-g.com. Thank you for listening.